Well, hello, how are you today? Um, I can't help but think about uh, what I saw this morning on the news. I forget what outlet it was, but one of the mainstream ones. And they were showing the cluster bombs blowing up somewhere in Kyiv, maybe, because there's no way to verify uh, where that video was taken, when it was taken, and so on and so forth. But anyway, cluster bombs or any bombs, cruise missiles hitting Kyiv, it's not a good thing. But here's how they framed it. Uh, war crimes by Russia because they're dropping munitions on civilian areas. And I was thinking, hmm, WikiLeaks, uh, you know, the whole thing in Iraq and uh, collateral damage, which has been discussed for 20 years, way out in the open by all kinds of people. Many books have been written. And uh, now, of course, we forget about Hiroshima and napalm in Vietnam, arc light, Afghanistan blowing up weddings, Libya, Serbia, on and on and on and on and on, etc., etc., etc. Wow. You know, the double standards and the hypocrisy is just cutting serrated you know it's bifurcating of the mind and soul because it's so blatant and of course human beings you and i are just emotional creatures mainly rarely slowing down to think things through in a slow way considered careful taking care to be logical and rational and skeptical of our own thoughts and ideas. That rarely happens. We just get lit up. It's like somebody kicked us in the, in the shin or the funny bone. We just react. And then when we slow down and think about things, uh, it becomes a lot more difficult to handle and deal with. Now that we're the whole West is flooding Ukraine with weapons. We can't imagine any end in sight. Um, people call themselves Christians. I wonder what kind of Christians they are, whether you're Russian Orthodox, Ukraine Orthodox split away from Russian Orthodox, or Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant of any flavor and go and do this to people for money, basically. Because the players, they don't really care that much about anything but winning the game. And of course, profits. And everybody, even the lowliest little freshman congressperson in the United States of New Miracles is a kleptocrat when they take money from special interests and lobbyists when they're more or less paid by the revolving door to go make a bundle in the private sector after they've served their constituency. What kind of moral, ethical, loving people are we when we don't collectively push back against this nonsense? I understand how powerful propaganda is, and uh, how easy it is for us to be programmed by stories. You know, basically, that's the code in our brains that get us to believe and act on things, the stories, you know? And of course, that triggers a lot of emotion. So I think, you know, in, in the States, uh, there, there are these vain Christians who are all about themselves. They're just Christian because it feels really good. And on many levels, it feels good to be better than non-Christians or other 
kinds of Christians. It feels really, really great that Jesus loves you so very, very much, and God loves you in particular so very, very much. And you feel good because by comparison, you're better than other people who don't go to the same church. And you're really in love with a wrathful God, a Judeo-Christian God that smites people, a vengeful God who kills the bad guys. You know, you're watching Vikings Valhalla and, and the Christian Vikings are running around wiping out the pagans. And then when you get to heaven, you're really excited because, you know, when you're in heaven, everybody in heaven loves you so very, very much. You get so much attention, so much love, you know, so much validation. Of course, you miss the status. You miss being the boss. You miss being better than everybody else in some way or another, which is why most of us can't count on people because these days when you can buy anything, and get anything you want on the interwebs and the YouTubes and whatnot. It's, uh, we don't need each other that much. It's not like we're surviving together in the woods somewhere, hunting and gathering. We actually need each other and our children are brought up by the tribe, not just mommy and daddy in their um, Mac mansion somewhere out in the suburbs. So, um, I think we forget what these myths and religions are telling us, you know, the value of them, the context from which they come, how just tweaking a belief just a tiny little bit can turn it into something kind of ugly. I don't need to go into all of that stuff, the sins of all you know, religious institutions over the centuries. But if we're going to broaden our circle of care and love to include things beyond our little selves, you know, I'm better than you. In my mind, there is no doubt that I am a better man than you on so many levels. And it makes me feel so good. And although I love you and like you so much, when I talk to other people about you, I point out your weaknesses. And I emphasize my strengths because I'm fragile. I have a fragile ego. I'm, I'm just a delicate human being who needs a lot of attention and respect and love. And, and, and you got to fear me and whatnot and so forth because, you know, I'm not really that happy with myself. I don't have a good relationship with myself and I don't know why that is. I haven't gone to therapy for years. I, all those CDs that I bought 20 years ago are still in the closet somewhere that I didn't listen to, all the self-helpers and the motivationalists and whatnots. And then we sit around here and we just lap up the hypocrisy like it's our daily bread, you know? Take this, drink it, eat it. This is what it is, God's love, our expression of it. Of course, you know, <laughs> we can point fingers at a lot of people and say they're war criminals or they're imperfect or they're sinners or they're bad guys. You know, our system's better than your system. Demonstrably, it's been proven. We can make all those comparisons, point our fingers in every direction, and we get nowhere. Because at the end of the day, you know, you get another ICPP report coming out saying that we're really screwing up our habitat, our ecosystem. And you listen to Sam Harris publishing a podcast by another guy talking about CRISPR-Cas9 and engineering viruses. And, you know, there is a, a really good science behind it. It can be useful. But are we wise enough to, to use it well? And how dangerous is it if it gets out? But collectively, I think 
Sometimes we have to take our eye off of all the things that make us comfortable and pick up our cross. Who among all these good Christians actually picks up their cross and bears the burden and sacrifices something for somebody else? I mean, do we do that? Or are we just in it for the love and attention, for that warm love that God just gives us when we're in that state of prayer? We're going to go in to the little group and we're going to tell how it was a miracle that the other day I went into the store and they, they had some magnesium supplements that hadn't been on the shelf for a long time. Doesn't God love me so much? And then I'm going to step over some guy on the sidewalk who just wants a dollar so he can get something to eat. Why? Because I'm better than him. He's a drug addict. He doesn't work. He's lazy. We judge each other all the time. And we judge ourselves to be better than everybody else. When are we going to pick up our cross? What are we going to do about this thing? Now, I'm hoping and praying just like you are that Vladimir isn't going to dust off that button. Because we could end our suffering very quickly if he does. You know, nuclear winter kills us all a lot faster than climate change. The end of the day. But hopefully there's somebody around him that, that would stop that. And before we get too excited about, you know, arming the, the insurgents, can we try to remember what's been going on for the last 20 years, at least. Just kind of look back at that and ask ourselves, what kind of Christians or Buddhists or Muslims or Hindus are we when we can't pick up our cross and sacrifice something for the good of everything that we depend on? Because even if you're in your goggles, in your bedroom, glued to a, a couch, having a much better life as a poor person in the virtual world than you could possibly dream of in the real world. That's, that's not real. <laughs> and so let's say all the rich people are out having fun because they've rewilded the planet and now it's just one big huge country club. And the rest of us are in our little apartments on our VR goggles buying real estate and getting, you know, all kinds of really nice little icons and stuff. Having wonderful experiences, posting to a virtual Instagram. And then, you know, out in the real world, uh, you know, everybody's just having a wonderful time. I don't know what's going to happen, but we have to start to think that somehow we're going to have to recognize our part and parcelness of this whole great game that we're in, whether we are active, whether we're players, whether we have power, whether we're hopeless, whether we're knowledgeable, ignorant. And I just ask all, all of my friends who are so so excited about their spirituality and being loved by God if, um, if they're going to look at the real world and recognize that there's still a lot of suffering going on out there despite all of our wonderful progress and that Russian people are people, Ukrainian people are people just like us, so are Chinese people. And uh, it sounds all silly, but I think it's time we really started doing some projects together, picking up our cross and doing some stuff. Who am I? I'm nobody. What the hell am I doing? I just do what I can around here. I'm not preaching. I'm sad. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can learn to sacrifice something for each other again. All right, people, take good care. Have a wonderful day. Smell the roses. Bouillanti, out.